This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're recapping a busy week for the basketball, squash, swimming, and track and field programs. Plus, Nordic skiing got its season underway. Well, sort of. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. On Friday, the women's basketball team hosted Middlebury and the Bobcats earned their first NASCAC win of the season in dramatic fashion. Senior Emily Friedland made five three-pointers in the second half, including a pair of clutch ones late to help the Bobcats secure the 60-57 win and hand the Panthers their first NASCAC loss of the season. Left wing for Friedland, eight on the shot clock. Middlebrook with five. Friedland fires from way outside. Got it again! Emily Friedland has 12! Four threes tonight! Beats up by three, 52-49. Middlebrook looking for some options off a screen from Davenport. Middlebrook on the drive. Out to big course. Extra pass. Freeland's wide open. Got it again! Oh my! She's got 15! She's made five threes! And the Bobcats lead by six. Time out! Panthers with 57.1 seconds to go in the game. Friedland joined the Bobcast immediately following the victory. I think my team did a good job at finding me when I was open. Everyone was driving and kicking, which has always been part of our what we've been working on this season, so today it really paid off. I know Coach Hall talked about how you're known for your defense, but it must be nice to get, get some, a lot of offensive contributions in this game, right? Right, yeah. I mean, I've been working on my shooting a lot this season, so yeah. What's the, what's the biggest part about what you're working on when it comes to shooting? Is this repetition? Yeah, repetition. Um, I've been getting in the gym a lot with Mike Seltzer. He's been great, um, really coaching me on becoming a better shooter. So, yeah, it's really paying off. And obviously, obviously the team was thrilled after the win. It's, it's huge to get this first NESCAC victory, right? Felt like the best game you've played this season, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. We're coming off a stretch of um, a few losses and not playing great. So before the game, we all just like really focused up and we knew what we had to do. So I think we just came in and did what we needed to do. Middlebury game, a little extra uh, happy for after the victory. Yeah, I think I think this is my first time at Bates beating them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's always great to beat a team that you've never beaten in my four years. So, yeah. Great. Emily, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. The women's basketball team fell to Williams the next day by a score of 56 to 44. Both basketball teams are 1 and 3 in NASCAC action after the men's team fell on the road to the Panthers and the Eves. They will both play Tufts this Saturday with the men on the road again and the women home against the Jumbos at 3 p.m. The swimming programs remained undefeated on the year with an impressive sweep of Middlebury Sunday at Tarbell Pool. Despite not having any divers, the Bobcat men and women outscored the Panthers with senior Riley Ewing breaking the pool record in the 200 backstroke and junior Alex Bedard breaking the pool record in the 100 breaststroke. While the men coasted past Middlebury 170 to 118, the women's team competition went down to the wire. Bates had to win the final two events to beat Middlebury. Senior Captain Hope Logan rallied to win the 400-yard individual medley and the 200-yard freestyle relay team sealed the 152.5 to 141.5 victory for Bates. Logan also won the 200 free and finished second in the 200-yard breaststroke. For her performance, Hope Logan is our female Bobcat of the week. Hope, first of all, I know the meet with Middlebury on Sunday came down to the wire uh, you were in one of the last races of 400 IM. Did you know you had to win that um, to keep the Bobcats' hopes to win the meet alive, or what was your mindset going into that race? Kind of. I was pretty nervous uh, going into the race. I knew that we were down because we don't have any divers this year, so we were going to have a 32-point deficit. So I, I knew that going into Sunday, and, um, yeah, I was pretty I was pretty nervous <laughs> I understand you came from behind to win that. Um, when you're in the middle of the race, do you have any sense of where your competitors are in terms of, you know, where they are in terms of ahead or behind you? Yeah, so the 4 a.m. is an event that I swim a lot. It's pretty long, and uh, usually I come from behind. Um, so I'm a back half swimmer. I back half it. I'm not that hot of a backstroker. 
So when I come off the backstroke, I know that I'm usually going to have to make up some ground in the breaststroke. But when you swim breaststroke, you can, you can see someone uh, kind of in the corner of your eye, and you know where they are. And um, it's kind of fun because, well, you're hurting a lot by that point, but uh, right. you can hear your teammates um, with every breath you take. So when you come up above the water, you can't really see who it is, um, but you can kind of hear, like, the roar of the pool around you. And then when you swim freestyle, you breathe to the side. So um, you can definitely see your competitor then. Uh, and, yeah, you can – I could I could see her. I could see that mid kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was your reaction when you found out you won? I mean, I, I knew I had her in the last 25. Um, mm-hmm. And when – I don't know. When I get to the wall, I just – try to hang on for a moment <laughs> just because you kind of hit the wall and the lactic acid hits you. But um, it felt pretty great just because my team was really excited. Every, yeah, everyone was really excited about it. So that was a good feeling, definitely. And then the final race, I know you weren't involved in the 200-yard uh, freestyle relay, but did you get a chance? Obviously, you probably got a chance to cheer them on, or were you still, like, recovering from your race? <laughs> I saw the whole race, yeah. Uh, that was awesome. The girls looked great. Um, yeah, Yannicka really pulled it out. And then, obviously, Logan um, came home strong. That was great to watch. It's awesome. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So you're one of the captains this year. What are some of your responsibilities as a captain? How do you and uh, Logan McGill kind of lead the team there? Um, yeah, so, you know, and it's kind of daily responsibilities are when you get on deck – um, you want to make sure people understand what they're doing. Um, you call, uh, you know, this, the practice. You make sure the practice is moving along. Um, more than that, you, you organize team events. Um, you kind of try to keep an eye on people, see how they're feeling, um, check in with people. And, you know, it's kind of, I guess I do a lot of more of the organizing and behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, but then before the meet, um, on Sunday, we did get together and I tried to remind the girls just to have fun with it. And uh, I was really excited to be on deck with them. You must be pretty impressed with how strong the team is considering you don't have any divers and you're still able to beat, you know, Middlebury, a pretty good program, right? What does that say about your team in your opinion? The girls are so strong on, uh, Sunday. I was so impressed with all of them. Um, I'm so impressed with all of them just in general this year, um, we're so tight and, uh, we're so, everyone is so supportive and I am constantly (laughs) just, um, so grateful for the freshmen and the sophomores especially. And well, the freshmen, especially, they just bring such a positive energy to practice every day. Um, it's just really great. (laughs) Uh, and, in, you know, we had some really good swims from Monica and Hannah and Emma with some good wins from those girls. Um, but then, you know, Lucy Faust and Caroline Apathy, um, you know, gave us some really solid swims in second and third, which y- we needed those points. Um, and they really pulled through yeah. for us. Everyone had really solid swims. Yeah, you touched on the first years and how much energy they're bringing. Um, you know, as a senior now, take us back to your first year with the swim program, what was one of the biggest adjustments you had to make going from high school to college? Oh, um, I didn't swim nearly as much in high school. Um, I probably swam from November to uh, February or March, which is the season that we have, but we have preseason now. Um, You know, I didn't swim mornings. I didn't have morning practice. Um, I had a much bigger team. I had... um, a much larger support system and um, I had of course um, Peter and Vanessa who are just really wonderful coaches and have so much knowledge about the sport. What Uh, do you learn from them over your four years you think the coaches? Vanessa is definitely um, she's tough in the sense of (laughs) she writes tough practices and she does not apologize um, when things are tough she in that you know, that makes you better. Um, And then coach has definitely, um, as far as racing goes, taught me about, you know, just taking a deep breath, 
and swimming your own race. And he's he's really good at uh, recognizing swimmers' strengths and um, trying to get you to um, really capitalize on those things. Excellent. Now you're from Maine, so what made you decide to kind of stay in the area for college back in the day when you were deciding on schools? <laughs> Uh, I was tempted to run away from the, <laughs> from the cold. Uh, definitely. My parents pushed me to look at um, uh, schools in Maine, and Bates really stood out to me as a place um, where I felt like I could succeed. And uh, when I came to Bates campus, I was <laughs> maybe a little bit surprised that I how much I liked it, um, but I really wanted a small school, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think swimming definitely was that when I was a freshman was something that drew me to Bates um, and the success that the team had had placing fourth at NESCACs the year before I came, and uh, how everyone on the team was looking to improve and the excitement around the sport that was definitely a factor. So now moving forward for the women's swimming team, I know you've got. Bowden this uh, Friday coming up at the right Colby on Saturday. So back-to-back -back days with meets, not much of a time to turn around. It's kind of a good warm-up for the championship season, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, you got to be used to that when you are in the sport um, because that's what our championship meet is about. It's about swimming your hardest and then um, recovering harder and coming back the next day. Bowden is going to be tough. They've got a good lineup. Uh, Colby is our last meet at Tarbell um, for uh, home this year. Um, so it's the senior meet, so that should be a really fun meet, um, a great meet with all of the senior parents coming out to support to their seniors this year. Well, that'll be, yeah, 1 o'clock there on Saturday against Colby. Uh, Hope Logan, mm -hmm. our female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Thank you, Aaron. The Nordic skiing teams had their races postponed Saturday at the Colby Carnival because the weather was simply too warm. And on Sunday, sophomore Graham Houtsma turned in an outstanding performance in the 10K freestyle, finishing 19th out of 99 men and earning 12 NCAA points, his best carnival finish in a non-sprint event of his career. For his efforts, Graham Houtsma is our male Bobcat of the Week. Colby Carnival, a little kind of a weird start to the year, right? You had one day postponed, then you did the first day event on the second day. But what was that like, getting your mentally reset for the second day after the first day got canceled there? It was kind of a, a shift, but um, it was I didn't feel that much pressure because I just I just come off a couple of races over break. So I felt like I really had my mental game there. But um, it definitely kind of threw me for a little bit of a curveball because I was like, all right, I was I got really excited to race, and I was like, not really racing. And but no, but just um, went out there and just went through my typical routine. Just tried to focus on what I was doing. Yeah, it's funny because people look at our website. Oh, that's the first event of the year for Nordic skiing. It's not really. It's the first carnival event. So what do you guys do before the carnival season? Uh, so before the carnival season, so in uh, during the first semester, what we do is we have a we go up to Canada. We have a bunch of um, a bunch of our colleges, so like uh, UVM, Middlebury, Colby, Bowdoin. Uh, we all go up there. We all go up to uh, just north of Quebec uh, by uh, Mount St. Anne, uh, uh, 4A. And um, we all do a big training week there. And we end the week off with a, with, like, a little time trial. So that's kind of our first unofficial official kind of race. Um, but what I did to prepare is um, I went up to Alaska to the U.S. Nationals to do some races up there. So I, just to get my, my body and my mind in the zone of like, uh, getting back into racing before coming uh, back out east. So you went up by yourself? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went with you. <laughs> um, so w there are two of us who went. It was myself and uh, Ben Keener. He's a freshman. Okay. And I, but no one else from the team came, so we went with our clubs. Mm -hmm. So we went up there. We raced for about a week and a half. Did I did four races while up there and varying distances. What's it like racing in Alaska? Um, it's very dark. <laughs> it's very dark. Um, it's really cool, though. It's interesting. It's, it's a lot different. Um, because it's, I mean, it's not too different from here because we're racing at sea level here, but, and also racing at sea level there, but uh, the crowd's different, I'd say. It's just um, a lot more intense than that. You have a couple national team guys up there, people trying to qualify for uh, world juniors and those trips. 
Tell us a little bit about how you first decided you wanted to come out to base. I know you're from what, Colorado? Colorado, yeah, yeah. I'm from Colorado. Not that decision come about to come to Maine. Well, I was looking east in general, so that kind of narrowed the field. I was also looking at schools that had Nordic skiing, so that that narrowed the field right. even more. So, <laughs> so I was looking pretty much at the almost like NESCAC schools. So I looked at UVM, I looked at UNH, I looked at uh, I didn't look at Colby. <laughs> Did not look at Colby. <laughs> uh, look at obviously Bates, and yeah. I looked at uh, St. Lawrence and a couple others. And what it really came down to is, I, know, I really like the co- I really like uh, the coach here, Becky. Mm-hmm. She, she's awesome. Liked her, and so that kind of helped draw it towards. And then, well, but and also like the t- and also the team environment. That was a, that was a huge factor as well. The team here is awesome. Excellent. Going back to Colby Carnival, yes. 10K freestyle. Mm-hmm. This is nothing new for you. No, it was nothing yeah. new. It's just uh, it's just. It's just a little bit quicker. That's yeah. what it is. So you have to kind of adjust, like, how you're going to pace the race. So longer distances, you might go out at the start a little bit slower. The uh, shorter distances, so like 10K for the guys, which is the short, which is the second shortest distance that we do next to sprints, um, you go, you'll generally go a little bit quicker. Do you prefer freestyle over classic? I would say so. I'm, I mean, I'm working on classic, but I, I de- my, I'm, definitely a bit of, I'm definitely a stronger freestyle skier. That's how I've, that's my, I tend to lean a little bit more towards that. Does it allow for more creativity, or what are some of the differences? It comes a little bit more naturally. Like I did hockey growing up, so like I'm, that motion to me is a little bit more, a little bit more, um, a little, feels a little bit more natural. Whereas someone who, uh, who like someone who grew up running, say like doing track or cross country running, might find that cla- the classic motion is a little bit easier. It makes a little bit more sense because it's right, right. to them put your foot like slide your foot forward to go forward, whereas freestyle it's more or less pushing off to the sides to yeah. uh get uh, to go forwards so give us a little insight to the skier's life at Bates because obviously you guys can't really train you can, kind of can train on campus a little bit for nordic mm-hmm. but you your competitions are off site there's a lot, a lot of traveling and buses and on bands and stuff like yeah, that yeah. what's a lot that life like so in the fall what we do we do a lot we do a lot of dryland training i mean obviously we can't ski year round because yeah. you know snow is limited <laughs> and so what we do we do uh, we spend a lot of time roller skiing which is like rollerblading but the heel is free mm-hmm. so and they're and on little little blade like little like short planks of wood so it simulates skiing so we do a lot of that we do a lot of long distance stuff during um uh, when we're not like in season to just help build the cardiovascular system and just getting used to like going over longer distances and we do a lot of running uh, a lot of strength training as well because that's such a huge part of it now a lot of the core the arms legs it's all it's all very key to skiing and then um when uh the type of intensity do we do a lot of threshold so like uh just like just like below where your body is uh, producing lactic acid but can also clear it at the same time we spend a lot of time in that heart rate zone just uh just to get used to being comfortably uncomfortable. That's the best way to describe it. Right, right. Well, last question for you. Um, looking forward to this year. Obviously, your first carnival event under, the, under your belt. You'll have to make up the other one at some point, though. But uh, what are some of your personal goals or some of the goals the team has set? Uh, so the, the, one, of the, one of the big goals that the team has set, uh, specific, uh, guys and girls, is uh, we, want, we really want to win the Tremie Cup back this year, which is uh, – we did last year. Yeah, we did last year, yeah. so we're hoping to keep that repeat because uh, last year we broke that 10-year tie with Colby ah. to win the Chummy Cup, and we want to keep that going because, you know, it's, it's fun to do that, and it's kind of a cool way to just, like, get the team under one goal. Um, go, per, like, other personal goals is the team just, you know, want to have fun, uh, be win Chummy every weekend, so, like, kind of try to beat out the other, other main schools every weekend. Yeah. Um, more personal goals. Uh, I mean, I'd love to make NCAA's this year. That's that's one of the big ones. So we'll uh, we'll see how it shapes up. But you know, I'm I'm optimistic and how we'll go for the week. Uh, well, forthcoming races. Great. Well, Graham, thanks so much for joining us here on the Bobcast. And congrats again on your performance at the Colby Carnival. Oh, thank you so much. The squash teams both dropped five to four heartbreakers to Middlebury on Friday, but the men's squash team bounced back to beat Williams. 5-4 to four on Saturday in thrilling fashion at the Bates Squash Center. With the teams tied at four, first year Omar Atea had to win his match at the number four position, and that's exactly what he did, rallying from two games down to pull out the victory. We chatted with Atea about that match and his first year on campus so far. Omar Atea joining us here on the Bobcast, recapping an interesting weekend, certainly for the men's squash team. Uh, epic win over Williams. You're down 2 nothing. You know you have to win that match. What's going through your mind? Um, well, at first, actually, um, at at two at two zero, uh, when I was down two zero, I I didn't know that 
I was like the final game. I didn't actually put that into my mind because and just the pressure and, and like all that. So I didn't really like focus on the um, the overall game score. I was focusing on my score and figuring it out. And my teammates, they were with me and they were helping me. They were coaching me and telling me new strategies to come back. And I put it into my head that like I have to, I have to win this. Like just first for like for the team and then for myself, like just in general. So. When did you find out that it was going to be the tiebreaker, though? It was it was at the fifth game. Oh, read it out the, the fifth, fifth game. game. Wow. The fifth game. It was like it was it was two all, and like I was crossing by the big screen, looking at the score, and it's four four. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, okay, this is it's it's the time now that you have to do this. So. And you're playing. You probably notice the bigger crowd, right? Yeah. I'm I actually I, I like playing in crowds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it actually help. I don't know. It, it helps me. Um, I, I like I like the the crowd the pressure it makes me play better that's why that's well, just me and you won that fifth game relatively easily yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that 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 really helped what adjustments did you make first two games I was playing with the wrong strategy I was I was I was really um, so in squash terminology we really like I I played in a way that really made him relaxed and I played the way he wanted me to play. Um, and that what really caused me to lose the first two games, and then so when I um, got coached by my teammates, um, uh, by uh, Mahmoud Yosri and um, Anirudh Nambiar and Graham Bunnell, they all like all of them. Um, they were with me and they were uh, talking with me um, about like playing against, like playing against the 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 opponent, my opponent. They had told me how to like change my um, my strategy, how I'm playing. Like I was first playing like really like quick squash, really fast squash, really strong, hitting the ball really hard. They um, made me uh, change that to more relaxed squash and more uh, defensive squash, smarter squash um, instead of attacking because that wasn't what what I was supposed to do. So that that really worked out really well. Interesting, and obviously, you know, different matches will have different strategies. Probably, that's not some players you might want to attack. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, that's that. I I'm more of an attacking player, but yeah. that was that wasn't the right way to play against my opponent. So I, we changed the strategy. Excellent. So your first year, yeah. uh, hail from Cairo. Yeah. How did you decide to come over to the states and play for Bates? I I, I went to a boarding school in uh, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Kent School. Mm -hmm. Um, I was um, I applied there to play squash as well, and um, uh, I got in and I started playing squash at Kent for three years. I came here as a sophomore, um, and then uh, I applied to Bates because um, I found like because of other Egyptians here um, saw like Mahmoud Yusri and uh, Ahmed Hatara, and also Abdul Khalik. Yeah, the, like I knew I knew them all before coming here, so I. I, I saw Bates as a great squash team and also a really great balance with academics. Um, so that's why I chose I, ch I chose Bates like out of all of, like the options. Growing up in Egypt, when do you start playing squash? I know some guys start at a very young age. Yeah, I actually started later yeah, than, okay. than others. Yeah. I, I started um, n at eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is considered late. Yeah, it's considered late. <laughs> most, most kids back home, they, they start out like five, four years old, so... So I was considered as a like a late starter to this, yeah. When did you decide that you wanted to you know come to America and you know play for a boarding school and possibly go to college here? So I um, so ninth grade I thought about so I, I was I really wanted to go to college abroad in general, yeah. like outside of Egypt. Um, and then I realized like a lot of Egyptian squash players uh, they go to college here. Yeah. So I I was looking into that, but but then I saw people going to boarding schools. I was like, all right, uh, maybe going to a boarding school would help my chances into getting into college here. So and I thought it would be a great experience for me, and and I I just I just did it, like just took the choice, like made the decision to go to Kent. Sounds like you enjoy it so far. Yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying Bates, like. I'm really happy that I chose to come here. What's been the biggest adjustment from playing in boarding school to playing in college? College is way harder. Yeah, well, college is harder. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah, and the competition uh, in board, like uh, high school squash, it it wasn't that competitive. I think um, 
Um, you ever lose? <laughs> uh, no, actually, yeah, I, 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 yeah, a few times, <laughs> obviously, but um, about it here, it's much more competitive in general. Like the teams in general, like in in high school squash, you'd find like two, three good players in each team, and then the rest are just like they just started playing the sport. Yeah, yeah that's like I, I didn't like I don't mean anything against them, right. but just but here everyone knows how to play and everyone's good. Like and number one to number nine, you'll find teams that they're just as good as each other like everyone's good so that's that's what i thought is like hard, it's harder and obviously practice is harder and like people take it more seriously like i so it's a much more competitive environment it's definitely taken very seriously it's very it's a really mental game too isn't yeah. it like, yeah very 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 intense game yeah i that's why i think what was it like having your first practice at the college level at midnight? I remember when you guys did that, right? Oh, that was the – yeah. I I was very confused about that. But I was like, all right, sure, we'll do it. We'll do it um, 12, like 12 o'clock on the dot. That that sounds like a great idea. So what? It's fine. So after this weekend, obviously, you saw some pretty tough competition. And so what's some, some of the team's goals kind of going forward, you think? Um, so our our team goals is to focus on what's to come. So we have Wesleyan on uh, Wednesday, and we're supposed to uh, play them at Wesleyan. Uh, we're hoping to do well in that. And then we have like very important games like um, FNM and Brown. Uh, very important games. If we win those games, it will help us um, be in the B flight um, um, in the CSA Nationals at the end of. I think February. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, um, not really sure the schedule. And the the national system here. Have they explained all that? Because it's yeah. kind of complicated, yeah. right? Yeah. The A fly B fly. Yeah. yeah, and then and then we're also like focused on um, uh, Nescax. Yeah. Obviously, um, very, we're very focused on that. We're very focused on playing our other Nescax teams and winning against them because it's going to help us in our rankings and the seeding um, in the Nescax tournament. Great. Well, any other thoughts on your first year so far at Bates and what stood out? to you, you know, on and off the squash courts? I really like how, how like, the, the size of the school. Mm. Like, because I feel like um, I've been here for one semester, obviously. I don't know everyone, but I have I feel like I got to know mostly everyone, especially the people in my class. Mm -hmm. um, got to know everyone. I know everyone from, like, all the athletes from different sports. Yeah. Um, all, like, I, I see pe different people everywhere, like, from – like different clubs, different like everyone with different interests, which that that I like. I like the difference in everyone, and it's also a close knit community. So that it makes me feel like I could get more fr like I ha I would come out of Bates with more friends, other than like a bigger school like where you would only like come out with only like five to right. six. So I feel like I'll I'll come out with more people from Bates than in any other school because of the, because of the size and the close knit community. Great. Well, Omar, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Uh, Appreciate thank, it. Thank you so much. The track and field teams opened their season by finishing second to MIT and ahead of Colby in a home meet at Merrill Gymnasium on Saturday. Junior two-time All-American Aiden Eikhoff broke the school record in the 1,000-meter run to lead the women's team, while senior two-time All-American Adedire Fakariti won the weight throw and the shot put to pace the men's team. And speaking of All-Americans... Next time on the Bates Bobcast, we'll talk with Bates great David Pless. The three-time NCAA champion in the shot put is returning this weekend for the Bates Invitational. Plus, we'll give you a full recap of another busy week for basketball, swimming, skiing, and squash. All that and more next time on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs>